Also on the point today, residents in Texas are still waiting for answers. After last week's severe winter weather led to major power outages across the U.S. state of Texas, around 4.5 million people were without power last Monday, and more than 14.5 million Texans have had disruptions to water services due to frozen or burst pipes. Over 30 related deaths have been reported in Texas alone so far. Given Texas' power grid is self-contained, the only state in the U.S. under this system, some have said the crisis was years in the making. How avoidable was the power outage and who's been hit the hardest? And what can be done to prevent another catastrophe? Joining me today from Dallas, Texas, via Skype, Merrill Matthews, resident scholar of Institute for Policy Innovation, and Wang Tong, chief reporter of the Global Times. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Uh, Meryl, I want to start with the most important questions. How are you doing right now, and how are things looking in Dallas? Uh, we're doing fine here, thank you. Uh, we were under the power outage, uh, the rolling uh, power out outage that uh, most people were, so power would be on for two or three hours, and then it would be off for maybe six, seven, eight hours. Uh, you didn't get any notice. It would just come on, and then it would just drop. So uh, we got pretty good at uh, when the power was on to charge up our phones, charge up the iPads, uh, get the microwave going, and uh, when the power went out, we just sat by the fireplace. What was the toughest part in that experience? I mean, it, it was tough without power or water, but was there a time when you felt you weren't getting any help from the government or from the community? Well, there, there, there wasn't much they could do because the roads were largely impassable. So as long as you had a gas fireplace, which we have, uh, we were able to, to survive this. Now, many people didn't have that if they're in apartments or smaller homes. Uh, that would have been a real struggle for them. Uh, in addition, the, um, uh, the, the cold weather, just uh, the, the real problem has been, I think, for many people, the, the frozen pipes, because we don't keep our water pipes in the homes protected like they do in the north. So uh, the, the problem now for so many people is the, bro the frozen water pipes that are bursting and flooding homes on the floors, uh, coming in from the ceiling, caving in roofs and so forth. It, that has been a real mess. Merrill, the extreme weather started early last week, but from what we understand, many people in Texas still suffering from power outages and water supply issues. At least 30 deaths have been reported why is the power outage so persistent and uh, complicated to solve? It, it, almost every aspect of the power failed. So the power plants often failed because of the, uh, the cold weather. Uh, our sources of power of electricity generation, whether you're talking about natural gas, uh, renewables, coal, and nuclear all had problems. So we lost about 40% of our electricity generation capacity, even as demand was spiking. So the only uh, solution that they had was to do to, ro to go to rolling blackouts. And that it was a struggle, but that worked for most people. However, a number of people were under complete blackouts for several days. Ours, uh, it started on Sunday evening, I think. Ours came back on fully, I believe, uh, Wednesday afternoon. So we were for two or three days that had the rolling blackouts. Some people, the blackouts lasted much longer. And for some people, if they were near a, a, a hospital or um, say a, a, a fire station or something where they're get priority on the grid. Some people didn't have any blackouts. Wang Tong, rolling blackouts is an improvement, but certainly not good enough for people uh, living in extremely cold uh, temperatures. When you observe all of this happening in Texas, in America, the world's biggest economy, um, and with early warning signs for ERCOT, what are your thoughts about how this crisis could come along? Well, that's right. I mean, when we just came back from the uh, Chinese New Year, we saw that uh, millions of people in Texas and other states were living without power, could not perform the basic func functions of a civilized world. And that was quite unbelievable for anyone who has been watching because America, like you said, it, is the most powerful country in the world. And they have a government uh, system that they're the, in which they take so much pride that they want to spread all over the country, uh, all over the world. 
However, it, c it could not, uh, you know, time after uh, time and crisis, af uh, crisis after crisis, they could not function uh, properly uh, in terms of these uh, power outages. In Texas, I mean, uh, it was a systemic failure, uh, not on the business side of things, uh, how they generate and distribute uh, power, as well as on the government side, where they cannot, they did not do anything, apparently, uh, to prepare for harsh weather conditions. Uh, to be fair, yes, uh, these kind of uh, weather can be hard to predict. However, you know, uh, the, uh, we did some, uh, a report on this, and that uh, there were reports from the federal government that the U.S. Uh, transmission lines were so old, like uh, most of them were 25 years uh, or older, and there were nothing uh, done to, uh, to prepare that, uh, to fix that. And then after, what struck me the most was after the crisis happened. I mean, we have seen a mayor said that the government doesn't owe uh, you anything that you know only the strong would uh, survive and we have a one of the two senators from Texas were taking vacations and some other people were suggesting that people in Texas would you know go on longer mm. without power to just uh, you know to just uh, stay independent from the rest of the country uh, so it, it's a systemic failure and it was quite unbelievable for anyone I think from many people around the world to see that uh, this is happening in the United States today. These remarks are certainly uh, very hard to swallow at a time uh, like this. Mayor, I want to come back to you. Let's talk about responsibilities. Um, well, the government said ERCOT should have done more, right, especially given the fact that about 3 million people um, had a power freeze back in 2011. There should have been a lesson for ERCOT to prepare for uh, the winter season the way it it does for you know peak summer. Um, do you? Th how much is or how much of this is ERCOT's fault? Well, th we're going to have we're going to work through that because ERCOT will point out that they have no enforcement uh, capability. They can't force power plants to winterize. Uh, so the politicians, the elected officials, are pointing fingers. Uh, the the. Public Utility Commission, the PUC, and others are pointing fingers back, and they're going to have to work through that. One of the things that, that I ran across, which had not even crossed my mind, was that in Texas, because of the state lockdowns for the pandemic, uh, various types of uh, going out and checking uh, uh, compliance with things was pushed back on a range of different things in the spring and early summer, uh, and it raised the possibility that that were uh, were the organizations not able to actually go out and check to make sure things had been done, we don't know the answer to that. So that's something that will be worked out over the next several weeks because this becomes the number one priority of the state legislature in Texas. How do we prevent something similar from happening in the future, Merrill? It's a very good question. They're talking about trying to winterize uh, the power grid right now. It, that's It's hard to do after these have already been put into place. Texas' problem, t it tends to be heat, not cold. We do get this cold, and, and we have in times past, but it's it's rare. But um, they're, uh, it, it's very expensive to go back and try to winterize uh, wind turbines uh, and other grid, natural gas uh, facilities and so forth if you haven't done that initially. But I suspect the state's going to look at trying to spend that money because when we, with Hurricane Katrina, when that came through in 2005 and the state uh, officials did not seem to be ready for it, they got blasted for it and everybody learned that lesson. You don't let that happen again. And my guess is they'll learn the lesson. They'll make sure they may overcompensate for it, but they want to make sure this doesn't happen again. Wontong, your thoughts on that? What are the lessons from this, crisis in, uh, this crisis in particular? Uh, will ERCOT and Texas learn from this catastrophe? Well, uh, I certainly hope so, but I'm not so optimistic uh, because, you know, this happened, you know, ten, uh, a decade ago in Texas. And yes, weather conditions would happen again, I'm sure. Uh, and, you know, uh, this, uh, it's not that the government or the people don't, doesn't know or they don't know that this could happen. You know, power outages is not rare in the United States. Actually, in fact, the United States is one of the, uh, the only, uh, has the most uh, power outages among the developed countries. What happens is that they know the problem that their uh, equipments are outdated and their distribution system has problem. 
but the problem is that they could not find, uh, find uh, funding for those. You know, in Texas already, there's discussions about uh, not about how to fix the problem. You know, how to fix uh, the equipments, how to, how to make them more, uh, you know, uh, more adaptive to harsh weather conditions, but about um, you know left and right about politics and about whether we should uh, we maybe we have we had used too much renewable energy windmill it, it blames on everything but the actual problem you know the many uh, several presidents have already uh, brought this up about you know huge investment plans in the United States infrastructure system but it could never get past Congress mm. and that's th that's the problem political gridlock once we have a little bit of time left, let's indulge ourselves here. Uh, very briefly, could something similar happen in China? China has had its fair share of tough weather where conditions in the immediate aftermath were horrible. But I don't seem to remember um, anything quite as similar, uh, uh, not for a prolonged period of time. Do you recall anything? Do you think something similar could happen in China? No, not uh, that I recall, and I also did a research on this. Uh, not that, uh, you know, we had also had some harsh weather conditions a few years ago during the Chinese New Year, uh, when it's usually a, a peak season for, uh, peak, you know, for high demand, uh, power demand. But uh, it, it's not like this. It's not that this uh, so, uh, you know, extended a period. And, but what happens, China has been massive, massive investment plans. Uh, you know, the uh, equipments, the tra uh, trans transmission lines are uh, maintained and uh, ma maintained and upgraded each year. They, they spend a lot of money on this. And also, we have a, a, pow a national power grid, uh, which means that if something like this happens, in, for example, in Sichuan, where I came from, other, uh, you know, uh, uh, other uh, po power uh, sources could be redistrib uh, redistributed to those mm. areas, so then it could be fixed the problem very promptly. Right. Uh, Merrill, we hope things continue to improve for you and other Texans. Uh, we're happy power apparently held on during this broadcast, at least. Thank you for your participation. Merrill Matthews, resident scholar of Institute for Policy Innovation, and Wang Tong, chief reporter of the Global Times. Thank you to you both. And that does it for this edition of The Point. I'm Zhong Shi and for Lucian today. Thank you so much for your company.